Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and specifically, welcome to my Masterclass series, which goes above and beyond my regular tank reviews, which are intended for the average or above average player, or somebody who just wants to maybe theory craft a little bit, with builds that have worked for me to get exceptional results in specific tanks. Today I'm going to be looking at the T110E4 which when it was first introduced was probably my favorite tank in the game. Then Wargaming significantly nerfed it, then they buffed it a little bit and today I'm going to be letting you know how it performs in 2022 and how I managed to make it work this year. When we look at the win ratio for the T110E4 we can see it is just below 49% average. It's completely in the middle of all of the tier 10 tank destroyers and that's probably what you would expect for such a well-rounded tank that has a semi-traversable turret. Doesn't really have the damage per minute, but definitely it's flexible, way more so than most other tier 10 tank destroyers. I'm going to quickly compare the T124 to the 60TP and the T123 so I can highlight some of the strengths and the weaknesses of this tank and give you a, a recommendation as to whether this vehicle is effectively worth it or not. It's funny that the T124 has exactly the same DPM and alpha damage as the 60TP, which was a vehicle that went in significantly after the T124. It's almost as if when they put the 60TP in, they were thinking, well, let's just make a T124, but it can have a lot better armor, not have a weak point on top, and have a fully traversable turret. One thing that the T124 does get, however, are these just wonderful rounds. 295 millimeters of stand pen, 375 millimeters of APCR pen and full blooded HE rounds with 1100 alpha and 90 millimeters of pen. Really, if you want to make this tank work, you are going to have to make use of its penetration advantage. Otherwise, realistically, you might as well be playing a 60 TP. You'll have that fully traversable turret, you'll have two extra degrees of gun depression, you'll have an improved reverse speed, you'll have a better effective speed on medium terrain and comparable on soft. And with the field mods, you're probably going to be able to pump that up as well a little bit more. And I'd say the 60 TP's armor is massively better than the T124. It also gets an extra 600 hit points. So really, when it comes to the T124, to make this thing work, it has to all be about that ammunition. When we also take a look at how the T124 compares to the T123, well, the T123 doesn't have a traversable turret at all. The T124 can turn 90 degrees to the left and 90 degrees to the right. That is its advantage. However, it gets so many disadvantages compared to the T123. Firstly, it fires half a round a minute less, worse aim time, worse accuracy, worse turret reverse dispersion, I guess because it doesn't have a turret on the T123, and massively worse gun depression at 6 degrees rather than 8 on the T123. Although the vehicle is faster, no doubt, and you do have that semi-traversable turret, which is a big advantage, but your armor's awful compared to the T123. Really, the only advantage that you get on the T124 is that you do have that semi-traversable turret. Now, don't get me wrong, it is an advantage in itself, but the way that I've always looked at the T124 is it's kind of in between a T110E3 and a 60TP. So how do I personally make this tank shine? Okay, first let me give you some recommendations for equipment. I like to use gun rammer with vents and I like to use a turbo in the third slot of this vehicle. I would also have a second build of this tank where I would recommend that you use a gun rammer in the first slot, durability module in the second slot, and then either turbo or vents, whichever you prefer for that kind of city map engagement. Field mods on the T124, the first one you must take reinforced suspension, otherwise you might as well uninstall the game. Next, I want to improve the accuracy on this vehicle at the expense of the aim time, and then I'm going to be improving the view range because concealment after firing is pretty much irrelevant. I decided for the seventh field mod to make my hit points worse and to make my crew a little bit more vulnerable to improve the reload of this vehicle to try and give it every little bit of damage per minute that I possibly can. But keep in mind that you might need to start using a premium med kit if you want to take this if you don't want your crew to be injured quite a lot. And for the final field mod, I actually decided to not take it. And that is because this vehicle's reverse speed is awful. 10 without a turbo and if you were to lower that to 8 kilometers an hour that's horrendous now if you want to take the reverse speed on this tank you actually have to sacrifice suspension repair speed which means that you can now be permatract and also means that you have to sacrifice engine power and so i feel that this is one of the few field mods that i would actually recommend to take neither because each modification makes one aspect of the tank absolutely horrendous when it comes to crew skills the only real one that i would 
thoroughly recommend, of course, would be Intuition, which you're going to have to have on both of your loaders. Honestly, the ammunition is the only special thing about the T124 compared to most of the heavy tanks, so you have to make use of Intuition to drop out towards those awesome high explosive rounds and to use the wonderful APCR rounds on this tank. I guess you could kind of get away with it by just firing APCR in this vehicle, but then you wouldn't have the high explosive for some tactical situations. If you have to focus on repairs or concealment on this vehicle, it definitely has to be repairs. This is a chonky tank destroyer and it is not one to try and remain hidden. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend making sure that you also have a skilled commander in this tank with situational awareness and recon because otherwise your view range is not going to get into a good position. And I feel like this is the kind of tank that doesn't want to use coated optics. It want to, wants to fight in close quarters but by using situational awareness and recon and the field mod to pump up that view range a little bit more, you can get away without coated optics on this tank and still be fairly proficient at decent distances. All right, I think that's quite enough jibber jabber. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. So here we go. Firstly, we're going to be rolling out in a nice matchup on Tundra. And in this kind of situation, you, you've got a few different ways that you could play the T124. Of course, you could go and make your way over towards one of the, the sneaky starting locations here and try and get uh, one of the shells from maybe these bushes at anyone who's making their way over. Alternatively, you can go and try and play like a, a heavy down the alleyway. But again, I don't really feel like this tank is intended to be kind of that narrow pass frontal tank destroyer. That's the T-123 territory. One of your strengths that you're going to have to develop in your T-124 is effectively being able to figure out whether you can be like the good support tank on the medium flank or alternatively whether you're best suited to go after the heavies and in this situation I decided to go and try and fight for the hill because there aren't really too many super scary tanks that would go up there apart from the Progetto 65 and I feel very good against mediums in a vehicle like this. Apart, apart from when uh, we bounce off the Type 61, a little bit of an annoyance there at the start of the game it would be so lovely to shave off pretty much half of his hit points with a single shot. And really, this is where, when if the T124 doesn't work with regards to its ammunition, it is in a hard state. You'll see that I turn left there because I know that the six degrees of gun depression this tank has is awful. Luckily for me, um, my allies come and help me out and that lovely overmatch over the Type 61 and boy does this thing hit hard. I really want to highlight just how nimble this thing gets once you've got that second field mod and you've got the turbo. Do you see how we're actually starting to manage to chase down vehicles like the LT432? Now I have no excuses for this next shot. My excuse was I guess I was sleepy or that maybe I thought the LT432 was going to make their way up towards the left instead of turning towards the right to be able to escape. Awful play there, and in retrospect, if I'd been completely hot and on him, I would have probably loaded a high explosive round, because remember I've got 90 millimeters of pen, and I would have been a 50-50 to one-shot that LT-432. Oh, you hear that ding? That's the ding of intuition, baby. And we're gonna see if we can put it to work maybe against the FD-405, but no, not against the GW Tiger P. We'll fire an AP shell into the top of the vehicle, once you start to get those accuracy field mods, yeah, you can really help that 0.37. Some people might go as far as to want to use a an aiming device on this vehicle, but I really feel like the T124 struggles without a turbo. At least it did for me. Otherwise, I can't get around the map. I can't really brawl. I can't really reverse as well. The reverse speed on this tank is abysmal. Luckily, the turbo can pump that up if you're using a bounty turbo, I guess, to 13 or 14 kilometers. If you're using a Bond Turbo, we could go even, yeah, 14, which would be absolutely awesome on this tank. But it, if you do have a bounty, I would thoroughly recommend slapping on this if you plan on playing a lot. HE, baby! That's actually a low roll there, would you believe it? 937. That's a very low roll. I've got 1,100 average damage, and that FV405 found that he's possibly not the kind of tank to go up against t T124 and we win our turreted tank destroyer duel. We could have one shot that FV405, well when I say one shot we could have removed all of his remaining hit points in a single go. Unfortunately for us we low roll but luckily for us somebody else manages to put in the extra shell and I wanted to highlight this replay not just because we're playing against tier 8s, I wanted to show you that this tank does do very well against tier 8s but because of that moment the ammunition that this vehicle has is its strong point. If you don't make use of those HE rounds intelligently, then you might as well be playing a 60TP. 
Nice to, to ramp kill the SU-130PM while we're on reload there. We're just going to speed this game up a little bit. Or maybe I shouldn't to give you an idea of just how slow this tank is. I mean, you all know how slow this vehicle is. It is not fast. That's why I slap a turbo on it to actually try and make it reasonably good. So now we're going to get up behind the 7772. Put one into the Progetto 65 to finish him off. The 7772 finishes off my Centurion Action 10. And in this situation, it's just about trying to get backwards as quick as I can. But maybe I can even ram him a little bit there. He, doesn't, he does 26 ramming damage to me, but I do 113 to him. This is a heavy old vehicle. You don't want to mess around with it. And we finish off the 114 as well. Giving us 5,600 combined and 5 kills that we saw in 5 minutes. What I really wanted to highlight from, from this gameplay is that... The T124 is so flexible that it can go anywhere on the map. The way that I found to make this thing work was to go as quickly as possible to where there's going to be a guaranteed engagement. To get your shots in and then hopefully snowball the game into something or alternatively drop back and try and provide some offensive firepower from the midline if you can't make that initial engagement work. The other thing that I really wanted to highlight from this replay is just how important it is to make use of the ammunition. If you're not, then you 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 might as well be playing something else. And that HE penetration against the FV4005 was just beautiful. And with so many lightly armored tanks in the game, 90 millimeters of penetration being very proficient, you'd be surprised what you can do and how many vehicles you can surprise with the T124. Next, I'm going to be rolling out on Runeberg, and you'll see that I'm going to be dropping the turbo in this game to instead be making use of the durability device. This is going to keep my tracks healthy, and it is also going to give me an extra 10% hit points. So now we're kind of getting up to, should we say, a heavy tank with a low amount of HP. Not even close to something like a 60 TP, which is going to be packing 2,600 before you get all of the field mods and if you want to use the durability device on the vehicle. Just want to highlight just how slow I feel getting into position now. Super Pershing is getting there quick. 53 TP is getting there quick. This thing without a turbo definitely, definitely feels as if it's lagging behind most of the vehicles, which is one of the reasons why I was using that module so much on this vehicle for my, my run towards my third mark of excellence. So in this situation, I'm going to fire gold. If you don't like it, then don't play this tank. Realistically, I'm going to bounce quite a few of my regular rounds if I'm shooting at a moisture, if he's angling his armor correctly. But he is not going to be bouncing many of my 375 millimeter penetration APCR rounds. Because either he manages to go through us, I'm not sure if he hit the weak point on top of our tank. Maybe, yes, he did. By the looks of it, just hit just on the corner. But spoilers, I am going to hit these players a lot harder than they are going to hit me. And these kind of trades in the T124 need to be your bread and butter. It has pretty big alpha damage. And one thing that I would recommend in this vehicle is to not shy away from having goes at your opponents. If you, if you don't depend on this thing's armor at all, you might as well be playing a tank destroyer that has a better gun, better DPM. It's more accurate. Maybe it has higher, higher pen or it's got higher alpha damage. Play something else. This vehicle is about taking your chances against your heavy tanks. Oh, talk about taking our chances against heavy tanks there. I'm pretty upset that that one dipped low and low and left against the moisture. Otherwise, we would have been able to get them. And this is going to end up being quite an expensive way to play World of Tanks, as I expect that each of these premium rounds costs about five or 6,000 credits. But maybe we are just about to three shot a Moistian while bouncing one of his gold rounds. Not sure if he missed our weak point, or maybe he just tried to shoot our cheeks in that scenario. The mantlet on the T124, fairly decent as well for being able to absorb some punishment. And when you can three shot a vehicle like the Moistian, just so consistently. If I was playing a 60 TP, I just don't think I could have reliably gone through the moisture at as many angles and just apply this relentless pressure. And having managed to farm as much of those tier 9 heavies as I think I could, I've decided instead to go around and try and support the TNH VZ51 against the Progetto 66 and his friends. You'll see that I decided that even though... Um, even though I fired a lot of gold, maybe I can fire some AP rounds now. I'm actually going to switch out to an HE round to see if I can make that work against the Progetto 66. Kind of worried about getting engaged in the left here. There's an Object 430U. 
I'm going to switch out to an armor piercing round to see if I can be able to get a shot up. But again, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to get caught by the Projeto 66. And he's actually on my map right now. I think I'm tunnel visioning right now. It's actually quite poor play. Luckily for me, the Progetto 66 actually gets taken out by the TNH VZ-51. We can also see some further for play that I... Oh, poor play even. Goodness gracious, don't know where that came from. Uh, that the FV-4005 managed to just drive around the corner. And if he'd managed to aim at us, yeah, we wouldn't have been very well in this game at all. Uh, that could have been all of my tank taken out in a single shot. All right, so I don't really feel comfortable with the 430U being above, so I'm just going to go back to trying to work this heavy flank. You never want to get yourself into a crossfire in this vehicle. It doesn't have very good side armor at all. Pretty okay for side scraping, though. But when you side scrape, make sure you watch out for the kind of the, uh, I guess, the exhaust on the back. That's actually very easy to be able to shoot, so you should be very careful with that. All right, so now I'm going to be a bit of a... A detective quacky baby. We're going to come around the corner very slowly by pressing our R key once. We're going to fire. Our sixth sense doesn't go off, suggesting that maybe there isn't actually anything in that bush. And I just would love to be able to get rid of this Object 430U. Taking chancy shots in your T110E4 in these kind of situations, or should I say not chancy shots, but shots which... The tank blind fires well. When you've got such a big caliber gun, you quite often overmatch your opponents. And with 295 millimeters of penetration on your standard rounds, which costs 1,600 credits, you don't really mind firing a few of them blind to try and see if you can um, catch your opponents ill-prepared. So you'll see that what I'm doing right now is I'm actually adjusting my reticle to where I could get the third-person camera to go past. So I knew where the rocks were, even though they were hidden behind the bushes. And we managed to amarack a T1, uh, an Object 430U. That was a feels good moment. You can see that I've pretty much like taken my hands off my keyboard. I'm probably celebrating right now. And yeah, who wouldn't celebrate in that situation? Uh, spoilers, I'm not going to show you the post game stats. I'll tell you just how many hit points it was on. I think it was on about 1,200 or 1,600 hit points. So you can add that to whatever our damage total is. So we're pretty much up to about 5,000 damage dealt so far in this game. And I was very happy that we managed to... Uh, Amarak, the Object 430 when they were blind. Alright, so the Teenage VZ-51 says that they're going to come along with me. And I'm going to press my thumbs up key. Because we are down by two tanks and we're still down by a thousand hit points. Even though we've done 5,000 damage this game. But luckily I've still got a good old slab of hit points. And I've got that durability module which makes me even less vulnerable to being tracked. In fact, it's going to take multiple shells to take my tracks off in this vehicle when I'm in this kind of a situation. So I fire a gold round there at the TNH VZ-51, just hoping that it was going to go in, but it looks like it actually hit the very thin mantlet that, that vehicle has. I'm kind of worried right now that there could be an FV-405 just skulking around at the back of the map, or even a TVP-100. And remember, while I do have a good amount of hit points, it's not enough hit points to really take a shell from the FV-405. Now we're going to use Intuition to go after the FV-405. We're going to fire an HE shell at the TVP. We see that it completely whiffs, which is rather alarming. There is definitely an argument on this vehicle that maybe you should use the accuracy device. I'd, I would never use a rotation device on this vehicle, though. I, I, I think if you're going to pick one, I would go for the accuracy, even though its gun handling isn't the best on the move or when turning the turret. I feel like you'd be silly to not go for vents and a gun rammer on this vehicle because it's quite often a tank that does want to be able to pump up its DPM and it has enough DPM that you would want to try and focus on it. Unlike something that has really, really high alpha damage like an FV405 or an FV215B183 or even a Jagdpanzer 100 which are kind of tanks that you might want to instead just drop the gun rammer altogether and try and focus on the durability and the mobility specifically on the vehicle. I mean, how long do I have to aim? Finally, that one, pretty much point-blank range, hits the TVP. In this situation, I was thinking, can I ram kill the T-69? Shall I just wait and reload? Probably should. In this situation, do I want the AP or do I want the HE as I go around the corner? Well, I'm going to keep the AP round loaded. And that wasn't very clean. I should have I should have been aiming a little bit better there against this T-69 as I came around the corner. But, job done. Bounce the T-69, who looks like they were using one of the stock guns. And slowly but surely, we're going to probably be up to about 6,200 damage dealt now, including the blind fire. And now, it's about trying to hunt down 
the object 430U. Ooh, don't sit in front of a T-124. It's not going to go well. That's the second 430U that we've managed to. Did I say 6,200, by the way? My maths is terrible. No, I, I, I think I only did about 1,200 or 1,400 damage. So we're actually only up to about uh, 5,500 or 5,700. A little bit more now, you know. Now we're up to 6,200 or 6,400 damage dealt in this game. And I'm just thinking, ooh, look at that tasty iffy 4005. Come to Papa, hopefully an HE shell. Oh, he hasn't even got anything worthwhile. And even then we miss. We don't get a top gun. Maybe the Scorpion. No, it wasn't a B. Still, decent enough round for the T124. And I wanted to, once again, show you... The, I, the, the conundrum that you're going to have to face with this vehicle as to what should be your equipment. For me personally, gun ram events and turbo or gun ram events and durability is decent, but there is a definite argument that you might want to try and improve the relatively poor accuracy of this vehicle. I just feel like if you do that, you make other aspects of the tank become really, really, really bad, like the reverse speed. And at the end of the day, I guess it's just going to come down to personal preference. But if you really want me to decide for you, yeah, I feel that a gun rammer, vents, and a turbo is the all-purpose setup for me personally on the E4. Let's get this show on the road. All right, maybe you got bored of me clapping tier 8 and tier 9 tanks. Well, here is a big boy tier 10 matchup. We're rolling out on Malinovka Encounter. And I'm going to use that turbo to try and get up onto the hill as quickly as I can to be able to try and get that ambush shot. All right, so when you're playing a T124 in this situation, you really, 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 really have to watch out for this horrible weak point on top of the tank. It is easily accessible. You also have to be careful with the six degrees of gun depression that you have in this vehicle. You definitely want to use as much of it as you can. If you do use your gun depression and you raise your gun a little bit, as well in between your shells, you might be able to dissuade your opponents from trying to shoot the weak point on top. Whoa, that's an interesting position for a Progetto 65. Don't mind if I do, 155mm gun is going to be able to overmatch the Progetto each time. I'm not going to use my repair kit right now because I was worried about getting double tracked. And if you're wondering if I just had a moment with my mouse flick up to the sky there, uh, no, that's because I'm trying to use the gun to cover the weak point on top. Something that you definitely want to do in a T124 when you're playing against opponents who are above you. Maybe we can even manage to catch a few shots with it. And that's the goal, really. It, heat rounds are going to be more or less absorbed by the gun. AP rounds will lose a substantial amount of their penetration if they manage to go through it. All right, let's see if we can clap some VZ-55s. I seem to bounce off that VZ-55 weak point way more than otherwise I would want to. But oh well, let's just keep going. So in this situation for our team, it looks like we're just all round pretty strong. It looks like it's a five versus five. Everybody's on the high ground. I'm just biding my time and oh, this is where the E4 can be great, right? This tank against vehicles like super heavy Germans, as we saw in the Moissian in the previous battle, and as we're going to see against the E100 here, spoilers, is absolutely disgusting. And it does things that other tier 10 heavy tanks just can't do. And when we consider how similar this vehicle is to a T1, uh, not, uh, to a, a tier 10 heavy tank, then of course you want to try and make use of advantages that this tank has, and that is those gold rounds. Do you see how it's green against the E100? If I was playing a 60 TP, it probably would be orangey color in that kind of a situation because I've only got about 316 millimeters of pen. So in this situation, you'll see that I ping the map quite angrily, and that's because I'm a little bit worried as to what my team are doing, with all due respect. Oh, gunner dead. Heal the gunner. Snap a shot into the VZ-55. Now we're up to 2,000 damage as we've raised the gun to try and protect us. Our team decided to go along the low ground. But how's that going to work when we have everybody above us? The VZ-55 hits us one more time, and I'm going to make my way up on my hill to put one round into this Kranvang, who does have his third mark of excellence. So if I can try and shave off as many hit points off that player as possible, that's great. I can't stay around here anymore. These players are doomed. They've got themselves doomed because all of our tanks with gun depression left this position. I can't hold anymore. And so I decided to leave the hill. I feel like the hill is lost. I feel like it's forfeit. And I feel if I just stayed in that position, all that was going to happen is it leaves these players irrelevant and redundant. And my opponents are going to shoot me in my weak point on top. And then I am going to be out the game. So instead, I decided to cut my losses. Maybe the, uh, the heavy tanks on the hill are going to be irritated that I did. 
But realistically, even if I killed the VZ-55 in that situation, I'm just going to get farmed by the two Grand Vans. It was a very poor play for all of our tanks with gun depression to go below. They needed to stay on the high ground. We had about four or five vehicles, well, we had about three vehicles, suddenly want to role play Anakin Skywalker in that situation, which just left the enemy team above them on the hill and farming them. And the T110E4 is not like a 60TP. It's not like a Cranvan. I can't just chill up there. I have a huge weak point, and if I leave it exposed against those vehicles, it's not going to go too well. Maybe in this situation, we can still continue to clap. And there we go. Centurion Action 10 dominated by our use of gold ammunition. If we'd fired AP, maybe it would have gone in, but, but why would you in this kind of a situation? I really don't think that this is your cheap tank. Ah, then again, I guess that there will be players who want to play this thing as an E100 or a 60TP that doesn't have to fire gold. And that's fine. If you want to do that, all the power to you. Play the vehicle with only regular rounds and HE rounds. Still have intuition so you can switch between them because you'll be able to make good use of them. And you will do okay in the T1 4 by only firing regular rounds. However, I still think you're going to be at a disadvantage compared to something like a 60TP. Uh, and you, 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 you're going to be putting yourself behind and not really utilizing one of the vehicle's key strengths. And that is it can get these real big boy penetration rounds that can surprise even hold down monster tanks in these situations. Centurion Action 10 probably wouldn't be thinking that would be clapping through their turret at this kind of distance. Probably thought, oh, I've got a really good British turret. Not against 375 millimeters of penetration you don't make. All right, so in this situation, it's a little bit annoying. The T110E3, in, uh, like, if the T110E3 is spotted in this situation, I don't feel it's a, a bad move to drive behind him. I'm pretty sure the guy was spotted by the Centurion, and I don't think I was adjusting my position to just use him as a meat shield. I think we were both spotted and I might as well be behind the tank that has the thicker armor in that scenario. Now of course if the T-123 wasn't spotted, which I'm pretty sure he was by the uh, Progetto I believe who just came alongside us, then it would have been a really nasty play by me to do that. So this is such an annoying situation here. I load an HE shell to try and shoot through his turret. Then he comes around the corner and then I load an AP shell because I'm going to be able to hit his tracks and then just as he's falling back I managed to finish the reload. So I guess intuition just not quite fast enough there for the T110E4. Should I have just fired an HE shell in that situation and probably tracked him and done 300 damage? Possibly. Uh, I don't know. I felt like the Kranvang might be overexposing his vehicle. I was just hoping that I could be able to handle it. So this kind of game is its still pretty close. We're down by one tank and we're down by 2,000 hit points. We're definitely still in this round to win it. And considering it's an encounter, it's going to take them a while to be able to cap our circle. And we've got an E50M who's still chilling, but in a good position on Overwatch. So maybe if the T1, uh, maybe if the E50M manages to get a spot in, then we're going to be able to do some damage in our T124. Or alternatively, maybe we can just hope that the enemy team get greedy and panic. So I'm switching out to a gold round here because I was thinking that the Kranvang was going to come after me. Uh, or expose himself on the ridge line, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Now we've got Soviet medium tanks up on the hill. The T-110E3 puts in a great round against the Kranvang, which now means that he's actually vulnerable to an HE shell. I actually had a tiny shot there on the 430U, but I turned towards the Kranvang as he was coming around the corner, and now I'm going to focus my attention back towards the object 430U. The T-100LT shuts down our 268, the Leopard shuts down the E3, and suddenly this is starting to look a little bit more grim as we're in a 4 versus 6 scenario. However, it looks like the E50M is now trying to flank, maybe to just try and get a little bit more of an advantage against the T-100LT, and I decide that I cannot give up this position. I have to hold here, I have to try and work these bushes, I have to try and get some shots for the Gorilla, otherwise I cannot see us winning this game. So I'm going to push forwards, even though the Gorilla is going to tell me to fall back. And unfortunately, at the worst possible time, the 430U manages to make their way. And the Leopard puts a round into my tank, now making me a one-shot for all of these vehicles. Luckily for me, the 430U ricochets. I raise my gun. I'm not sure if my gun absorbed that or whether it ricocheted as well. The Leopard ricochets off us. We're down to a one-shot now, having finished off the 430U. We're going to bounce another gold round from the 430U. And now we're going to reverse, reverse, reverse and realize, oh wait... 
I've got a big gun. He's got a belly that's explo exposed under this tank. Well, we're going to shut them down as well. And just like that, we managed to take down two 430Us, as well as also getting 800 assistance. And now our E50M goes in like a hero from behind by the looks of it. He rams the T100LT. I put a round into the Cranvong. Unfortunately, the Cranvong finishes off my E50M while he's burning to death. But wow, we just came back into this game. Sounds like the Gorilla as well just penetrated the fv 215 b 183 And we're up to four kills now. 5,600 damage and 800 assistance. And here is the Leopard. I've got an HE shell loaded, hoping that I'm going to be able to get them. But the six degrees of gun depression that T110E4 has just manages to let this tank down. I tell the Gorilla, thanks, come forwards I guess I'm just saying like obviously don't have much time to be able to type right now so it's just more of a case of like let's get into this position and go after this leopard the gorilla says to fall back and yeah I fully respect that the gorilla tells me to fall back in this situation I'm not intending to give the leopard a weak point I'm just trying to distract him I'm using this object 430 that's in front of me to just try and hide my weak point hoping that the gorilla is going to be able to come up uh, I ping the map to try and suggest to the gorilla where he should go uh, and just, I'm not going to get flustered by the, the full back commands that the gorilla is telling me. All right, mate, take it from here, but be careful from the FV215B183. In this kind of a situation, you just don't want to expose your weak point, but you also want to not make it so that the leopard's going to isolate your friend. So I'm going to wait in this kind of situation until hopefully I'm no longer spotted. I'm going to load an APCR round here. Because I was thinking that maybe I was going to be able to get the FV215B183, who is actually a one-shot for me, which would be absolutely lovely. I ping the map, worried that the FV might be trying to flank around the hill. But in this kind of situation as well, I feel like we've just got to take the chance and let the chips fall where they may, with only four minutes left to be able to get these vehicles out. So I get spotted in that situation. The griller tells me to fall back. I ask for a fight against the Leopard. But oh wow, the FV, who's clearly over on my left here, misses a shot. I say reload to suggest the FV is reloading and I decide to go after the Leopard. I hit the Leopard clean. The Gorilla misses the FV 215B183, but at least now the Leopard is a one shot. I really wish my Gorilla had gone in there and finished off the Leopard. I think if he had, we would have guaranteed uh, to have won this game, which is why I wanted to focus on the Leopard and not the FV 215B183. But in this kind of situation, it is a little bit stressful. I say go kill and I guess I at the time I was trying to suggest that the gorilla should go kill the leopard while I focus my attention on the FV215B183. You can see that I look at the gorilla and I just pray that he's not going to get one shot. The gorilla actually misses the FV215B183 and I'm just hoping that maybe, just maybe, this player isn't going to be focused on us. So we're going to come around the corner, we're going to slow it down a little bit. We spot him, we spot him, we spot him, we give ourselves as much time as we possibly can and we shut him down. And in this kind of situation, I feel like now the Gorilla should be able to win a one versus one. He can take three AP shells or two HE shells, which are easily penetratable from the Leopard. Now we're up to 6,900 damage and five kills. Hold on, is this the third game in a row, which I've managed to get five kills in the T124? Why are we never managing to get a Top Gun? Well, hopefully we're going to be able to pick one up against the Leopard here. So in this kind of a situation, it's just about being support. You don't ever want to get yourself too far away from the gorilla so that the leopard can isolate the gorilla because then the leopard can manage to take you down afterwards. But you also don't want to get spotted. So you want to be 100 meters back, at most 150 meters back from where the gorilla is. Always in a position so that if the gorilla gets spotted that you're able to help them out. And also if the gorilla manages to spot the leopard, you're going to be able to help them out. So it looks like the Gorilla actually gets hit by a high explosive round there, which fails to penetrate. I'm taking a look here. I've got to get forwards, and the Gorilla manages to finish them off. I say thank you to the, the Gorilla. It looks like the E50M on my team knew who I was. And just like that, a cracking game of World of Tanks for the T124. I really loved this game, actually. I, 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 I liked my decision making. I, I, de I definitely made a few mistakes here and there, and I didn't play perfectly. I think my rush up to the top of the hill to try and get the ambush shots worked really well. And then I was aggressive. I didn't back down until I knew that my team got themselves into a donkey graveyard. Literally, look at these three Anakins right here on my team, boys and girls. That allowed the enemy team to free farm the hill. But I feel like that fall back was actually pretty blessed because it allowed us to go on later on in the game to be able to take this one down with the E50M and the Gorilla. And... 
that is the T124 in a nutshell. A well-rounded, flexible tank destroyer that will appeal to two kinds of players. One, the free-to-play player who wants to play like a 60TP or an E100 but have more penetration without having to fire gold. And it will appeal to the, the all-round player who, when you set this thing up, it can actually be a bit of a juggernaut with such flexibility and fairly impressive damage per minute that can be surprising with a wonderful selection of ammunition. So all three of these games that you saw in this masterclass video were ace tankers, but the one that really mattered was the one on Malinovka, which was my third mark of excellence. And boy, what a way to get your third mark of excellence with near 7,000 damage, five kills and 1,336 base experience and 800 and 14 assistance to boot. Now, I did fire a lot of gold this game, but because we weren't resupplying our consumables at full price, we actually ended up doing fairly okay on credits. And that is because if you're penetrating the gold rounds in this tank, and maybe you can penetrate a few other AP rounds, it's actually quite an economical tier 10 tank destroyer to play, unlike something like the Jagdpanzer 100 or the FV215B183, whose rounds, although they do do more damage, cost way more than on the T124, which premium rounds cost 5,200. So my results in the last 60 days in the T124 since it was top of the tree, uh, when I was setting it up like this, were pretty impressive. I played 19 games, won nearly 79% of those rounds, 3,600 average damage per game, obviously with a good amount of assistance on top of that, and two kills per battle. When you get all the field mods on the T124, it definitely does feel significantly different. And it's certainly one of the tanks that has massively benefited from the field mods. However, I really don't think there's a mistake in the statistics and the T124 is just so darn average. It doesn't really provide any interesting flavors of gameplay compared to your 60TP. And I guess the only real advantage that you have in the T124 is if you play it like a heavy tank and you do get stuck in with some kind of combat build rather than sitting at the back and playing like a classic tank destroyer, you can actually end up being very influential in your battles because heavy tanks are the ones that decide the outcome of the battle early and then usually it's the team that wins the early battle that snowballs the game and takes down the overall result. And considering that the T124 is definitely a tank destroyer that can be played like a heavy, I guess one of the good things about the T124 is that it is actually a tank destroyer that can be played like a heavy. And whenever it gets matched up against an FE405 or a Gorilla or even an STRV103B, if those tanks kind of camp at the back and don't have that early impact, if you can manage to have it in your T124, that will allow you to propel your win ratio super high in a vehicle like this. But I honestly think for most people who aren't going to bother to get all of the field mods, who aren't bothered to get all of the, the fancy equipment, who aren't going to bother to get a really good crew on this vehicle, you're probably best going for something like a 60TP, honestly. And I also think that the T110 E3, its American rival brother, is probably still the more interesting tank to play because that one just has the real thick frontal llama and you can do things in that that you could only dream of in the T110 E4 but there's nothing you can do in the T110 E4 apart from the fancy ammunition that you couldn't do in something like a 60 TP. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this masterclass video. If you did and you want to see more of these, then make sure you give it a thumbs up as they do take a long time to make. However, if you hated it, make sure you give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the T110E4 in 2022. Do you think it's an absolute god tier tank? Do you think it's an awful tank? And let me know if there's anything I missed out in this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.